now uh, I have the pleasure and honor to start the video session. Uh, we have three very nice, uh, very interesting video. Uh, we will start with our dear colleagues from uh, Poland, uh, Dr. Katarzyna Pawlak. Uh, she will uh, tell us about uh, her nice cases of uh, uh, gastric viruses and the possibility of uh, AOS guided coiling. Okay. Thank you so much, dear professor, for introduction. And it's a great pleasure and honor for me to be here uh, today and to have this possibility to present uh, the short case and exactly the management in gastric viruses when it comes to the US uh, guided coil implantation. And OK. So firstly, I would like to say a couple of words about the, the management, about the pathology, and what should we know uh, before we start to perform US guided coil embolization. And uh, here you can see the serine classification for gastric varices with the two main types, uh, with the gastroesophageal varices and isolated gastric varices. And the most common are uh, gastroesophageal varices type one, and it's about 75% of all cases of gastric varices. And in 92% of them, we can meet uh, large esophageal varices. And also very important before we start perform the procedure, um, is to assess not only the location, but also the size of gastric varices, especially the medium and the large one. And uh, about 50% of patients with hepatic cirrhosis um, have a gastric varices and the presence correlates with the severity of, uh, of hepatic cirrhosis. And here you can also uh, see the differences between the gastric varices and the esophageal varices. And the gastric varices are less frequent with a lower incidence uh, and bleeding rate. And also the spontaneous bleeding, uh, it's about 40% uh, of cases. And when it comes to the bleeding of gastric varices, there is more massive, uh, requires more transfusions, but also uh, the rate of mortality and bleeding is much higher than in case of esophageal varices. And also annual bleeding rate is up to 60% per year with a high uh, mortality and morbidity up to even 50%. Mm. Also, we should keep in our mind the predictors of hemorrhage when we are thinking about the treatment of gastric varices, when we should start, when we should do it. So we are looking for the endoscopic presence of red wall marks. We are looking for the size of gastric varices. Um, the best size for, for the management is uh, when the gastric varices is greater than 10 millimeters. But also we're looking for the location and some of location uh, are higher predictors of hemorrhage, like for example, isolated gastric varices type one. Uh, but also we're looking for the, the compensated cirrhosis, uh, rather C than B and hepatic vein uh, pressure gradient. And before also we start, we should consider the type, as I mentioned before, and the diameter uh, generally five millimeters, but, but most of them uh, it's good to, to perform the procedure when the gas repair size is greater than 10 millimeters or above uh, or about one, one centimeter. Um, and also the US assessment of gastric varices. We're looking for the Sutherland classification. And here you can see uh, the type of vessels, uh, the type of pathological vessels, like a superficial gastric varices and it's very good to assess the perforating veins, which are connected with the perigastric uh, collateral veins, but also with the paragastric collateral veins. And here in US examination, during the US examination, you're looking for the superficial gastric varices, but also you should assess the perigastric and paragastric uh, deep uh, collateral veins. And here you can see uh, how look the perforator, which is uh, connected with the superficial uh, gastric varices. So, so you're making a measurement of superficial one, and then you're looking for the perforator. And what is the most important when it comes to the tools for EUS guided coil, coil implantation? So for sure, coils are the one of them, one of the main element. Uh, coils with the synthetic fibers, which uh, can be the scaffold for histocryl glue. Uh, and this together 
um, leads to the lower risk of embolization, of embolism. Uh, but also we are looking for cyanoacrylate histocryl glue, uh, which lead to solidification and thrombosis in the gastric varietes. And the third uh, main element is lipidol. Um, we are uh, injecting about uh, one up to two millimeter each time with a needle catheter. And the great ratio um, between the histocryl glue and lipidol for this procedure is one to one. And lipidol is good because it's making the delay premature hardening, but also prevents uh, the occlusion in the endoscopic channel during the procedure. But sometimes when we don't have to access to lipidol, we can um, make the procedure with 5% glucose and, and we perform it at, as also our friends from uh, interventional radiology uh, with a good clinical effect. And how to pick up the great size, the good size for coil embolization. So the, the adequate size should be up to 30% larger than shorter axis of uh, gastric varices. Mm, and how to perform the procedure step by step. So we're using only one type of the needle um, and we should look firstly for the evaluation in US because sometimes when you perform the assessment with EGD only, uh, we are performing the second look with EUS and then we can observe that the uh, gastric varices are smaller uh, in EUS than uh, in EGD, so they are disqualified for this type of treatment. And then we are looking for the, the site, the place, like gastroesophageal varices type 2 and isolated gastric varices type 1. Uh, we are uh, looking also for the superficial, but also for the deep uh, type of varices and uh, the good diameter for this procedure. And before we start the procedure, we are performing the, we are checking the needle with water if everything is okay. And uh, also we are introducing the call before we perform the puncture, sometimes during the, the puncture uh, of gastric varices, but before the puncture, we are introducing the coil into the lumen of the needle by pushing with this needle stylet. And then we are performing the GV puncture with the 19 gauge needle in our, in our center. We have performed this with the echo tip from Cook. Uh, and then uh, we are performing the coil implantation like here. Uh, and here you can see the type of coils for 19 gauge needle. Uh, we're generally using tornado coils. These coils are with the different diameters and also with the different lengths. Um, and after the coil injection, we are performing the, the, the adequate number of coils. We are performing the, uh, the injection with a mixture of histocryl glue and lipidol. Um, and also then after this procedure, we are uh, flushing the needle by, with lipidol uh, to clean the needle, the, the lumen of the needle from, from the mixture. And after the whole pr procedure, we are performing the EUS color Doppler evaluation uh, to check if the complete obliteration was achieved. And here this is the demonstration um, how, to, how to push the, uh, the coil into the lumen of the, of the needle. So we are, firstly, we are uh, putting the, the, uh, the stylet with the coil inside uh, on the top of the, of the needle. And then we are introducing the stylet from the needle and stylet from the needle into this, uh, into this uh, uh, tool with the coil. And we are pushing out the coil from, from this tool into the lumen of the needle. And we are introducing about one half of the, of the stylet to push the, push the coil inside the, uh, inside the lumen of the needle. Okay. And then we are going for, to the next step of the procedure when we have uh, the coil inside the lumen. We are performing the coil implantation. Uh, I will show you the whole uh, procedure in the next movie so you can see how, how coil looks in the lumen. It's hyperhogenic. And after coil implantation, we have, of course, performed, prepared, prepared the mixture of lipidol with the cyanoacrylate histocryl glue and also the, uh, the syringes with the like, lipidol. And here, uh, after the coil implantation, we are performing the, the, the very quickly the injection from the uh, lipidol and histocryl glue. Um, and after this, we are, you can see how
how it looks here inside the lumen of the gastric varices. And after this, we are injecting the lapidal to flush the meter from the, from the lumen of the needle. And this is the whole, actually, the presentation from the assessment of gastric varices. You can see the, uh, the gastric varices, uh, gastroesophageal varices, uh, uh, isolated varices type one. And here you can see how it looks in EUS assessment. So you can see the big uh, vessel, the big gastric varices located uh, here. And also the assessment with EUS uh, color Doppler to check. And here we, we perform firstly the puncture of the gastric varices with a 19 gauge needle. And after the puncture, we are uh, implanting, we're starting the, the implantation of the coil inside the lumen of the, of the gastric varices. You can see how it's spinning uh, inside the lumen of gastric varices. Um, and whole procedure of the implantation of, of coil. Okay. Okay. And after coil implantation, we are performing the injection from the from the glue um, and the mixture or with lipidol. And after this, you can check with the EUS. Um, color Doppler, and you can see that we achieve complete obliteration without any uh, flow of blood in the gastric varices. So we perform the procedures and, and we achieve the complete obliteration. And okay, so here you can see uh, also the coil in the lumen of the gastric varices, and here you can see again how uh, how look the how look the procedure uh, how look the gastric varices after the procedures and you can check if you achieved uh, complete obliteration okay and when it comes to the risk of complications uh, of course there is a risk of pulmonary embolism also acute renal damage splenic or portal vein uh, thrombosis but, but also some gastric ulcer and myel uh, gastric varix bleeding. However, from our observations, we have almost 50 patients uh, after this procedure, and we observed that uh, we didn't observe any serious complication. Uh, only one patient had uh, had uh, gastric varix bleeding, but this bleeding was treated endoscopically with a good clinical effect. And uh, when it comes to the EUS guided uh, hybrid obliteration coil uh, implantation with uh, cyan acrylate glue uh, injection, uh, from the recent studies, the efficacy was about 94% and complete obliteration was about 84%. Uh, generally, the recurrence rate, early rebreeding rate, and late rebreeding rate were uh, similar. And when it comes to the EUS guided therapy, comparison between uh, EUS guided therapy and endoscopic treatment of glue with glue injection, and the EUS guided thera therapy is superior in terms of obliteration, but also in terms of the rate of recurrence. Thank you so much for attention. Thank you, Dr. Katarzyna. It's very, very, very nice uh, demonstration, very nice uh, uh, videos and a very interesting uh, experience in the field of uh, coiling for gastric varices. Of course, here in Egypt, uh, 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 we see gastric varices uh, um, very frequently and uh, no endoscopist uh, we didn't say, see thousands of uh, uh, gastric uh, varices, uh, of course. But of course, the technology of EOS guided uh, coiling is recently introduced. And uh, um, uh, I think your presentation and lecture uh, have cleared uh, a lot to our uh, attendants and the participants of this uh, uh, meeting, how it is uh, done so nicely. And I think also uh, easily and with uh, less frequency of uh, complications and uh, under guidance, of course, 
uh, as well. Uh, so um, uh, I think uh, um, the, um, the video cases only 15 minutes, uh, Dr. Hussain, or? Yes, or... yes, only 15 minutes. We have now so to we thank have only one uh, minute. Dr. Katarzyna. <laughs> yes, very nice presentation. And we are now just in time, just 15 yeah. minutes. Yeah, I just, one uh, minute. I hope that one, uh, Dr. One question. Katarzyna one question in this one minute. One question. Okay. One minute. Uh, how you how you make sure, Doctor Katarzyna, that this is the perforator or this is the feeding uh, vessel, and this is the most suitable point for you to uh, start applying the uh, coil and for and after that the uh, cyanoacrylate injection. Dr. Katarzyna, do you hear me? I think Okay, she... maybe. Okay, maybe we may me be... as a person. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. So uh, we are checking the perforating, but we shouldn't improve um, this coil into perforating vein because we had the case when the um, coil was uh, migrating. Yes. So in okay. this situation, we should be very careful and we should input uh, the coil into the varices. Varices right. close to the close to the um, perforance. Yes not into the perforant and not into the uh, deep varices around. We, the most difficult thing is to be sure that we are in the varices and the big varices, not in the collaterals around the wall. Yes, so the wall of the gastric is the basic to be sure where we are and what kind of treatment can we perform, yes? And it's very uh, safe procedure. So we recommend yeah. this, we perform many, many patients and in these huge varices in one place, not uh, in the all uh, part of the gastric, but when they are concentrated in one place with very uh, dilated veins above one, about 10, sometimes in even 15, 20 millimeters, probably it's the spectacular uh, kind of treatment for this patient. We recommend as a safe and very, very efficacy method for the treatment. Yeah, whenever the cost, of course, is applicable because the cost is not so high. The most, uh, the the highest uh, cost is with lipiodol, yeah. But um, this um, glue is not so expensive, and the coil also. So we input sometimes two, three uh, coils into one um, varices, and the same uh, needle with the same uh, injection, we put the uh, glue, yes? So we don't remove the needle from the varices. And uh, sometimes if we perform, for example, one injection, sometimes it's possible also don't use lipiodol, only glucosa, for example, to cheaper uh, this um, treatment. Okay, thank you. Uh